Welcome to the Theologist Podcast. My name is James Chason, and I am the preaching minister for the Park Hills Church of Christ in Park Hills, Missouri. In this video, I want to just show you how to use the link sets. Uh, let's say I want to use the links as I'm doing a study. So I'm going to open up my preferred Bible. I'll do everything from the library. So I'm going to jump open to the library. Now I use the ESV, but you'll use whatever translation you use. So I'll open it up. I like to have my translation on the left side. Just a personal preference. You could do it on the right side, doesn't matter. I'm going to open up a commentary. I'm going to open up Kaufman's commentary. Uh, I will open it up to, we'll just open it up to Titus for the moment. Now, up in the right corner of each resource, there's these three vertical dots. Click on that, and then you go to link set. Now, you could, I could do link set B, C, D, E, F. I'm going to do link set A. This is my first set of links. I'm going to go over to the Kaufman's commentary and do the same thing, link set A. Now, wherever I am uh, in the Bible, as long as I have uh, a commentary in Kaufman's, because I have Kaufman's open, as long as I have a book of the Bible that, that, is, uh, that he comments on in my Logos library, then it's going to jump there. So I'm scrolling through Revelation, and then Kaufman follows. If I uh, scroll in the commentary, the Bible follows. doesn't matter. Either way. If I jump to a different book of the Bible, as long as I have that commentary set, as long as, as long as it's part of a collection, then it's going to jump there. Now, Kaufman, I have in Matthew, I have Revelation, I have Genesis. I have a few of his commentaries in Logos, and they're all set um, as one series. So they'll, they'll follow that. So if I had the New American Bible Commentary or Tyndale's Commentary or Word Biblical Commentary open and linked, if I have a series, then the series will follow. It right? doesn't matter what book of the Bible I jump in, as long as the series covers that particular book of the Bible, then the commentary will follow. Pretty simple. So we scroll back and forth and all of that. All right, so that's simply how you do a basic link set, just using a Bible and a commentary. I could open up two or three or four commentaries or two or three or four Bibles or as many as I want. At a certain point there's too many things open and it, it, it just becomes cluttered, right? But I could link as many Bibles and as many commentaries as I'd like. Um, I could do a bunch of them. But let's do something a little more, let's say a little more advanced, a little more uh, advanced in our study. So what we can also do is we can link, believe it or not, we can link a lexicon. So I'm going to find a lexicon of the New Testament. I'm just going to go to oh the Lexham Research Lexicon of the Greek New Testament. Um, I'll open that up. Now I want to reposition this. I'm actually going to reposition this by left clicking the title up here and just dragging it down. I'll, I'll drag it down here. And then I'm going to go over to the three little dots on the side and I'm going to link set A. Now what happens when I link a lexicon to a Greek or a Hebrew Bible or an English translation that has a reverse interlinear attached to it, which the ESV does, if I simply left click a word, notice that the underlying Greek word, it's linked to my lexicon. It automatically pops it up. So I left click on an English word here. It shows me the underlying Greek word in my lexicon. So that's a great way. So I'll move up here to the abomination that causes desolation. Let's put on, let's click on um, desolation. So I'll click that, 
here it shows it to me down here. So there's the Greek word uh, in the lexicon and all the information. Now I could save this. I could go up to my layouts and then I could save this. Name this, you know, my Matthew 24 study or um, New Testament word study or something like that. But let's go a little bit further. Let's now add Bible word study guide. Let's go to guides and let's open up the Bible word study guide. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag that down to the bottom and I'm going to put it in this uh, bottom right corner but the left corner <laughs> as you can see there the left bottom corner of the right however you want to say that and what I'm going to do is I'm going to link this as well I'm going to go to link set A so notice everything is link set A the Bible the commentary the Bible word study guide and my lexicon. It's all links at A. Now the same thing, I'm going to left click a word. Let's left click abomination. Notice what happens. Not only does my lexicon open to that word, but I have done a Bible word study with one click of that word. So this is a powerful way to use the link sets to link all these things together. Again, I could go up here and I could create this layout or I could update my layout, right? I have this shortcut here, update layout, or you could type it in the, uh, the, the box here. You could put update layout and it would update your layout. Let's do another thing though. Let's, let's add a little bit more to this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the plus sign next to my Bible. And I'm going to open up another copy of the English Standard Version. So I'm going to have two copies of the English Standard Version open. I am going to drag it to the bottom. And I'm going to make it a little smaller. I want my Bible up in the left corner here to be fuller screen. I want my Bible at the bottom underneath to be in a smaller window, okay? Now I'm not going to link this. What I am gonna do is go over to those same three little dots, and this time I'm gonna to go to send hyperlinks here. Now what this is gonna do is, anytime that I have a link, a, a Bible link, to a different text of the Bible, it's going to send it here. It's going to open it up in this Bible only down here. So, you know, I'll go to a reference here. So I click on this and sure, I've got the hover that'll show me. But let's say I want to see the fuller context. I click that. It sends it to my targeted uh, Bible in the bottom. That way, my Bible up here never moves and my commentary never moves my commentary and my Bible where I'm doing my study only move when I move it. That's important to me. I don't want it moving every time I click a link. Now the same is true over here in my lexicon. There's there's references over here in my lexicon to different par parts of the Bible. If I click that it sends it over here to the bottom Bible uh, translation. That's exactly what I want. So now I'm never worried about moving out of Matthew 24 with my primary Bible window, which is in the top left-hand corner. So again, I could save this, create a layout and save this. Let's do one more thing. One more thing is a possibility. Let's go up here to the tools menu and let's open up the information pane. Now the information pane opens up in the right side. It's a right column. What I want you to do is go to its three little dots and this does not have the ability to link and it does not have the ability to send hyperlinks here. But we're going to see what it does. What I want you to do is to make sure that it's on click. Update on click, not hover. Click. If you do it on hover, as your mouse goes over a word, 
that right hand information column is going to be populating and it just it, it, it can slow down your computer and all that but if you do it on click watch what happens my Bible word study opens my lexicon opens and now the information pane opens the information pane gives me a lot more information in different areas some of its overlap right but notice right here translation so I clicked on the word desolation okay I click on desolation then I come down to where it says translation now it's going to tell me all of these versions here these translations translate this as of desolation the new revised standard version the new american bible the um, rsv they all say desolating and then the niv 84 uh, niv 2011 and the holman christian standard bible say that causes desolation and then down here the nlt says that causes desecration so right away that gives me a quick glance at what translations what versions translate this word differently how do they translate it gives me all kinds of other information as well there's word information um, footnotes this is great it actually opens up all of the footnotes that are in this verse um, so you can see them at a glance and then again I could click any one of these and it would open it up in my send to um, Bible translation at the bottom there. So there's a number of tools, resources that are open here and a bunch of it is linked and some of it is targeted, right? Send hyperlinks here. Uh, and then of course you have the information pane as well. If, if you like this setup, you could save it. Um, and then again, you can readjust all of these windows. Let's say you want a little more room, you want a little less room. You can kind of move the way these um, windows operate and look. I actually think right here is not too bad, not too bad. And as you're scrolling through, you can read your commentary. Anytime you want to look up a word, single click it. It opens it up in a Bible word study guide and in your lexicon as well as your information pane. Again, um, you, could, you could go up to the layouts and save that or you can remove them all right there. Um, so anyways, there's a great way to begin linking all of your Bibles and, and you can add lexicons and different things like that.